Do you want to generate images like this? Stick around and I will dig deep into the details that will give you the best mid-journey experience and results. First, take advantage of the free trial. It will give you the chance to get acclimated with the program before you commit to using it. You get 25 free credits to test out different iterations. It's very easy to use and once you get it set up, you will be able to use the Imagine prompt to generate any prompt you want to create images beyond your wildest imagination. Midjourney simply uses the keywords to compile thousands of images and bring them together to create four options for you to select from. Next, find inspiration. It is important to get another perspective to help open your eyes to your creativity. There's only so much you can come up on your own and getting a different perspective and other people's opinions on how they've used Midjourney but also getting the input of other artists and styles that inspire you from Google. Early on, it might be important just to test out different styles and artists, but once you get later on and more experienced, it's important to have a consistency in the work that you produce. As an architect, it's important to rely on reference images to give you inspiration and precedent images to kind of see what might work. It's important to go to different websites even check the feed of Midjourney because there's a lot of great examples of what other people have done and you can use um, similar text from other people's prompts, which can be very important. Using those precedent images, you can actually include their image URL. You will include this as the first part of your prompt and then you will add the text prompt that you want after that. Um, this will provide better source examples for better clarity of the prompt um, and give you more specificity if you don't trust AI. Sometimes the AI generates its own interpretation of what you say when there's gaps in the text. Um, you're able to use your own images based on the URL and not always rely on the AI generating it by itself. If you don't like always using the square ratio for the images, you are able to actually change the aspect ratio and quality um, you can change the size, the width, and the height to fit the needs that you want. Typically, people adjust this to like a 16-9 ratio or the other way around so that it can be better seen through the computer or through the phone. So when you post images, it will be full screen. Number five, refine your search. Use these tips and tricks for the best possible outcome. Refining your search is the most important part of Midjourney. If you get anything out of this video, it's that your search matters the most. You can have all the settings correct and know all the tricks, but if you don't have an impeccable prompt, the AI might not generate exactly what you wanted. Midjourney indeed has a mind of its own and will fill in any gaps found in your search. The wording and detailed nature of your prompt is incredibly important. The more specific or more vague you are determines a wide range of outcomes. Using terms like city, car, building can be wild cards because the vast number of possibilities in this vague term compiles a wide range of images that might not be specific to what you want. Instead, describe a city or building type. This will give power to your prompt, but also inform what exactly you want in your outcome of your image. The next trick is to uplight or upscale your images. This gives better light and visual effect on the images. This step requires you to go first and generate an image. Then once you have your four image prompts, you will be able to adjust and uplight and upscale these individual images if you choose to get a more detailed version. By doing these steps, your final image will have a better quality, but also a more realistic lighting. This is a step I recently learned about. You are able to save process videos. This will show how the AI develops your images. When using Midjourney, you don't immediately get the final images. It takes roughly 30 seconds to a minute for the progress to be complete. But some people like to show how their images have progressed. So Midjourney has a feature that shows the steps your video has taken as it develops in that 30 seconds to a minute. If you add dash dash video, this will save a progress video 
of your prompt. Videos will be sent to your DMs by the bot, but first you have to react to the result with an emoji. Next, I'll show you how to add a weight to your searches. Not only is it important to have the right words, but also to prioritize the right words. When you add weight to searches, specific words get more priority and more emphasis than other words, which is great when you're trying to be very specific with what you're generating. How you add weight to a text is type in colon colon and then a number. These numbers can be positive if you want it to be emphasized or negative if you want it to be de-emphasized. Some typical numbers that are used are 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, negative 0.5, negative 1, etc. A good reminder is to know that the total net weight must not be negative. So you need more positive weight than negative weight in your whole prompt. How to create shortcuts in mid-journey. There are instructions for how to do this on mid-journey, but they leave out a few important details. The way you do it is by using slash prefer options set command. From there, you will be prompted to add a name. From there, you will be prompted to add a name. This name will be the name of the shortcut you are setting up. After giving it a name, you will now define it. Then you select a value. In this value is where you will be indicating the prompts and the shortcuts that you want to enter. So whenever you type in dash dash the name of your defined parameter, it will always give you the same tips and prompts that you saved. The last step makes sense, but I have to reiterate it because it's very important. It's important to test new things with trial and error. You just need to practice. You need to find what works, but you have to be intentional. You don't want to just waste credits, especially when you have the free trial. You have to be very intentional with the prompts you use because I wasted a lot of credits just messing around with it. Next, you got to be specific, but also be vague. See what the AI can do on its own by being vague. And then you compare the results and kind of see which one you want to achieve the most. From there, use tools to recreate and improve on some of the AI generated images without having to start over every time. Using prompts, um, saving shortcuts, but also um, regenerating the images and giving different iterations is also something that I've tried that seems to be pretty cool and works out well. Um, this is just a really fun program and I have more tutorials coming up on showing how this may impact the field of architecture, how you can make money on it. So stay tuned for those. And if you want to see a video on how to install it, I'll post it right up here. If you like this content and want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.